there is something that I want you to see that you've seen, but you haven't seen, but you need to see it. And the only way to see it is if you look at it a little closer. Some people simply won't get this because they have an actual opposition to anything that's not English. And I get that. Some people don't want to see something that they are not used to. If it's new, if it's different, uh, if it doesn't make sense to them, well, then it cannot be right. And that's the case with many English speaking people who think that the English version of our Bibles is the only way to see it. And we should never, nor do we have any use for the Greek. And if you look at the Greek, then what you're doing is tantamount to sin. But uh, now I feel for those people because they're missing the richness of the Lord. The Bible was not given to us in English. And so the reason why you want to see what it says in the Greek is because you want to understand how the translators who took it from the Greek and translated to you in English, who, which is basically their commentary, they they cannot do what they cannot do. In other words, they're limited in trying to give it to you. And so that's why it's helpful to look at the Greek sometime. And I want to look at a passage. This particular passage is a very helpful passage that you need to see because I want to show you something that's there in the Greek, but it's not in the English. However, it's it's implied and stated. And so it's kind of hard to put it there in English. Now, you've seen me talk about John 10, 28 often. But there's one particular part of John 10, 28 that I don't spend as much time, probably as I should, and that's my fault, but I want to show you something. Notice what it says in the, in the English in this clause B, and they will never perish. Now, what I ought to do more often is speak about the words that are not there in the English, but are clearly there in the Greek. Over here, we have this kai ume apolontai, which is, and they shall never perish forever, ever, ever. But then what's also missing in that verse or in that clause is, Ice tan Iona. Then we have Kai Uk uh, Arpase, which is, and no one will snatch them. That well, that clearly comes after the ice tone Iona. Well, what is this ice tone Iona? This ice tone Iona is into the ages or into uh, eternity or eternally or forever. Now, I want to show you something that for some reason, and I get the reason why you don't see it in English. And people miss out on that because going back to this passage, he says that they will never perish until when or for how long into the ages or into eternity forever. This is a this is a phrase that we use oftentimes to speak about forever or eternal life. As a matter of fact, you see this word Zoe Ionan, and that means basically forever, eternal life, life forever. And so he says that they will never perish the impossibility of them perishing. And he puts a future tag onto this, which makes helps us understand why this also negates the possibility of uh, perishing into the future, because he literally says into the ages. Now, I want to go over here to Lagos. I want to pull this up as well. And I want to look at all the different times where we see this at. So when we look at this phrase, this Greek word, I own, uh, this is into the age. Now, there's different ways that it's stretched. It can be for a particular era or before time or eternity. So we want to look at when the Bible uses this regarding forever or into eternity. So let's click on this and then let's drop down a little bit. And I want to just read what this is. This is where it says, here we have, it says, Ios, I mean, so ice, tone, Iona, which is into the ages. Now I want to look at a couple of passages where we can clearly see this is what he means to say. This is what he's speaking of forever. And sometimes the English doesn't have that. Now, one of the passages that we already looked at was John 10, 28, but let's look at some other passages. How about we look at John eleven twenty six, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Well, you don't see the ice tone I don't know, or you don't see this kind of into the ages. However, if we go over here to the right and then let's kind of look at the passage in the English again, I will ask the father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. But then look over. I want you to now look over to the Greek and see what's actually missing. So what I want you to do is look over here in the Greek. And so what you can see is you see uh, down at the bottom, you have this ice tone Iona. And so the problem is we don't see that in the English. Well, why? He says, I will give you help that he may be with you forever. Well, the Iona part, that's there, but the ice tone is there into the age. So how long will this the Holy Spirit be with, with you forever into the ages. So it kind of helps describe 
helps us to understand how long he'll be with you. Not that the Holy Spirit will be there forever, but he'll be with you. I'm giving him to you to be in you. So we understand what Jesus or what the Holy Spirit is going to be doing, why he's giving the Holy Spirit to us. Another passage that you would see this in is in Hebrews 1.8. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now, look to the right where you see, he says, your, your throne, O God, and he sees, it says, I stone Iona. Well, why is that there? Into forever. So he's speaking about what it is now and what it will always be. So when we look at passages like the John 10, 28 or John 14 or John 11 or other passages, when we see this phrase, I stone Iona, it's right now going into forever. So anything that has this attached to it, it's right now going to forever, meaning it's uninterrupted. It will not change. How about another example? Now, there are a couple there are a couple of the passages. Matter of fact, not just one. Let me give you two more. How about Philippians 420? It says, now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Now, we see that forever and ever, but again, this term, ice tooth, and the tooth tone, it's a definite article. Uh, ice tooth, I own us, it is into forever, into the ages and ages, forever and ever, meaning glory to him now and forever. So he has glory when? Right now. Same thing we see in Galatians 1, 5. To whom be glory forever uh, for, or I'm sorry, for whom be the glory forevermore. Amen. What's used there? Eyes to Iona. So therefore we can see just using, we understand the glory of God, how he will be glorified right now and forever. The glorification of God is uninterrupted. So when you see that applied to other things, including our salvation, this life that we have is uninterrupted. That's what the phrase ice tone Iona means or ice tooth I own us anyway any derivation of the definite article doesn't matter but into the ages so right now forever that's the benefit and the beauty of the Greek but it also speaks to what God has done the complete and full work that Christ has done in those whom he has saved as well as even himself and glorify himself the uninterrupted unbroken life that we will have uh, will be there forever we have it now and forever.